Tabernacle um, last week, kind of just an introduction to it, and uh, we have uh, we have these uh, prayer guides for each of you to have one. Uh, it gives it all, of course, which we're going to do it step by step, teaching it, the purpose of it, the importance of it, the benefits of it. Um, I'm thankful for our guests tonight, thankful for everyone that came to the house of God. Uh, I, uh, um, I, I can let you know that the, the enemy, just because the church is being blessed, the enemy don't stop. Amen. We got to be aware. Uh, he's looking for every opportunity he can to cause somebody to stumble or to fall and and then make them believe that they're done for. Amen. But the devil is a liar. You can't forget that. The devil is a liar. And uh, the Lord specializes in dealing with, with our mess ups. Amen. Uh, he don't want us to. He don't. He don't want us to. He he don't want you to to mess up. He'd like for us to to all get it right and keep it right. Amen. Uh, but uh, but he made a way. He made a way. Um. How many of you saw we had the new heralds? The new Pentecostal heralds. Oh right. I didn't give you enough. Boy, that's a great problem, man. You need a few more too. All right, man. I bought a hundred of them things. Amen. I hope it ain't enough. Amen. I got another one in my office. I got a hundred and one. Uh, uh, we gave some out Monday night at prayer meeting. Uh, and uh, make sure everybody gets them. Um, you could go over it and you start attempting to pray through it. It has a guide on there for you. Uh, um, if you're praying all the time and you ain't changing, then you're praying wrong. Amen. 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 You're playing, praying all the time and still battling the same battles all the time. You get one for Kim Marcus. I saw her reaching for one while ago, and y'all was up both ignoring her. <laughs> Not really, but yeah, good job, bro. Um, it's it's just a fact, okay? I won't give percentages. Uh, don't know them, but I can tell you right now, we don't pray like we used to. As a people. As a people. Okay, I know there's probably a few that still do. But as a people, we don't pray like we used to. <laughs> and this prayer pattern that we're teaching, that we're going through, going over, uh, is a tried and true prayer, prayer pattern. It works. I'm going to caution you as I begin really begin teaching this step by step like I said we introduced it last week but every time I've, I've taught about three prayer patterns uh, drawing closer to God which I gave you a paper to follow um, the tabernacle and then we taught on praying forgiveness prayers uh, which is the five steps that you pray to forgiveness and every time I teach those, I feel a, a, a spirit that, that says uh, as if someone might feel like they're wasting their time because they already know how to pray. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm teaching this. I last taught it in the summer of 2013. The month of June, primarily, and July. And I'm preaching this under the influence of the Holy Ghost and under the prompting of the Spirit, not because I didn't have anything else to teach. But we need a move of the Holy Ghost. We need a sovereign 
Shekinah move of the Holy Ghost. We need the Spirit to move as it did on Mount Carmel. We need the Spirit to move as it did in the fiery furnace. We need the Spirit to move as it did when Jesus died. And most definitely we need the Spirit to move as it did on the day of Pentecost. And a surefire avenue by which that will happen is when the people of God begin to pray. It's when the people of God begin to pray. And begin to pray effective prayers. And begin to pray focused prayers. I, I talked to him Monday night and I haven't been able to get it out of my mind. Uh, uh, I, I've even tried to, 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 to practice it throughout the, since, well, all week long. It's Tuesday and Wednesday since Monday night. But uh, when the prophet told uh, Joe Ash to smite the ground and he smote the ground, boom, 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 and stopped. Now the prophet didn't tell him he didn't tell him how many times to do it. There wasn't a rule that said there's how many times to do it. But after he smote the ground three times, the prophet was very, very angry with him. He said, if you'd have smote it five or six times, you would have consumed them. But as it is, you're only going to beat them three times. And that's probably not going to be enough. we got to pray the same thing over and over again until something happens with it. Uh, we got to... Uh, and I'm going to touch on the importance of that here in just a few minutes. Uh, we got to learn to pray proactively rather than reactively. We got to pray just as hard before something happens as we do after something happens. Can I get an amen? As a rule, we don't. As a rule, we don't pray proactively as hard as we do reactively. I'm going to ask you about the herald. How many's already got one? The new heralds are back there on the table. Uh, if you get it just out of habit and don't read it, please don't. This is one of the best heralds that they've ever put out. I read it cover to cover today. Today, it took me over an hour to read every article in this. It's one of the best ones they've ever put out. Um, it, it has an article I, I may use it in my message tonight I don't know if I will or not but there's two or three of them talking about prayer Exodus 25 and 1 and the Lord spake unto Moses saying speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart you shall take my offering I'm really only going to stress one point in this that I feel like jumped out at me today as I was studying this. One of the things that you, that somehow along the line we've messed up is treating prayer as something you have to do. Now there, there's a paradox in that statement because you do have to pray. But you cannot approach it. Oh, Lord. I know nobody does that, so let me move on. That they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly. Everybody say willingly. With his heart you shall take my offering. Verse number 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show thee. After the pattern, everybody say pattern. After the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. Hebrews 8 and 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern. Everybody say pattern. pattern. Showed to thee in the mount. For our prayers to be effective, for our prayers to be continual, and for our prayers to achieve what God wants them to achieve, we must pray purposefully. And by its very essence, to pray purposefully, a 
pattern is required. You're praying for a purpose. And to pray for a purpose, you must have a plan to arrive at that purpose. And everyone that prays, we're not talking about calling all the saints together to pray for uh, an emergency. We're not talking about, as I said earlier, reactive prayers. I hope you understand that this is a pattern for daily, regular, consistent prayer. This is not to pray over your food. This is not to kneel down and pray, lay me down to sleep with your children. This is an appointment with God whereby you are going to follow a pattern and arrive at a destination in the Spirit. I, I, I've grieved somewhat over this, and I talked about it on Sunday, grieving over uh, the message that I preached Sunday. Because I've had several people say that they didn't understand it and they didn't get it. And and uh, I, I want to make sure that we understand it and we get it. Even if I have to teach it all twice, over and over again, I want us to make, make help us understand. For many of us, our motto of prayer, when we pray through or break through into the Spirit or we arrive at a place in prayer where the Holy Ghost is just so thick over us and y'all know what I'm talking about? Come on, stay with me now. Stay with me. Don't get bored. Don't get to playing games and what have you. Stay with me. This is very important. Your future could hinge on it. The future of your children could hinge on it. The future of our country could hinge on it. Hey, praying people can make a difference. You listen to me. You listen to this well. Brother Robbie, 10 righteous people would have saved four cities from being destroyed by God. 10 righteous people. I'm telling you something. People of God that are praying people, that are fasting people, that are consecrated people can make a big difference and pick up a lot of slack for all these hooligans running around out there living under the influence of the devil. We can make a difference. You got to believe that. And it's got to be purposeful prayer. It's got to be prayer with a destination. Many of us, how many of you have prayed and just had an explosive moment in the spirit where it was as if heaven touched earth? Now, understand me. I am fearful. I am fearful that there are many of us that have never experienced that in our prayer life. Quite frankly, more folks didn't raise their hand than did. I can tell you unequivocally, I hope you understand when I say this. I'm not talking about backsliding. I'm not talking about, uh, I hope you understand when I say this. Every time you get the Holy Ghost, it's better than the last time. You understand what I'm saying by that? Every time you get the Holy Ghost, is better than the last time. But for many of us, when we have a breakthrough in the Holy Ghost, it almost comes as a surprise. Because it doesn't happen regular enough. Because we're so busy and, and uh, come on, how many of you have got to pray and, and, and before you know it, you're thinking about your grocery list for next week. Come on now. This prayer pattern helps alleviate that because we're going somewhere. There's a destination. There's a method to our madness. Many of us, our prayer lives are lived by the motto, even a blind squirrel finds, finds an acre once in a while. Even a broke clock is right two times a day. I'm going to get down here and pray. If it happens, it happens. If it's not, I'll get it next time. But what we're going to learn here, this prayer pattern, 
Jesus, those mentalities are not conducive to an effective, specific relationship building prayer life with God. There are people that you can talk to. There are people that when they stand up and testify, you can tell automatically that they've been spending time with the Lord. Come on now. I want to be that person. I want to be that person. I, I want to be that person that, that I, I can pray immediately and be effective in continual prayer. I don't want to kneel down and pray and the first words out of my mouth be, Lord, forgive me because I wasn't ready today. We got to build a prayer life. You understand that Jesus Christ prayed regularly, He was God. But he prayed as an example to us. Okay, he prayed regularly. He told the disciples, when you pray, it was meant to be a regular occurrence. The Lord, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not, I'm not preaching this as a doctrine, but we look for rest in so many different places. You know what the Lord did when he rested? He went to a private place and prayed. I'm telling you that there's power in prayer. The last night that the Lord spent on the face of planet earth, he spent it in prayer. Fighting a war, fighting a battle. We can, I cannot stress enough to prayer. I, I, I preached to you a message several weeks ago, and I'm probably going to try to make it an annual event. And I, I started referencing it the other night and lost my train of thought. And I'm trying to do better about that, baby. But, 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 but it's the, the, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, were looking for an isolated place to catch Jesus so they could capture him away from all the people. Y'all remember that? Judas said... I know there's a place. I know where there's a place that you can grab him and there won't be no lot of people there. Because the Bible says Gethsemane, the night before the crucifixion was not Jesus' first prayer meeting in Gethsemane. It was a regular place that he went to to pray. And Judas knew there ain't a whole lot of folks following him to the prayer meeting. They followed him for the fishes and they followed him for the loaves and they followed him for the miracles and they followed him for the blind eyes being opened and, and the lame and walking and the dumb speaking and so on and so forth. But when it came time to just pray, even the disciples who went there with him couldn't stay awake. And when Jesus came and found him asleep, he uttered what I feel like ha this week has been revealed to me. That is list the greatest problem and the formula for success for any child of God. And he said unto them, Matthew 26 and 41, watch and pray. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. For the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And you're going to find out that in this prayer pattern, the first thing we're going to deal with is this weak flesh. You go on and look in the Bible. Read this, read this in here in the Herald. Brother Eugene Wilson's article in the Herald. I'm not going to read it to you, but read it for yourself. And you'll find out that if you haven't dealt with self, if you haven't got self out of the way, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. If you haven't dealt with yourself, if you haven't learned to fight the battle with your flesh in prayer and win, that's why your prayers aren't being answered. Because that, my friends, is what it means to ask amiss. Is asking under the influence of the flesh rather than under the influence of the spirit. Well, that went over like a one-egg pudding. But it's truth anyway. I want to pray for all my problems. I want to pray for all my mess. And I want to pray for all my junk. I want to pray for this. And I want to pray for that. But you haven't dealt with yourself yet. We got to get this flesh killed. We got to get this flesh under subjection. And I'm going to teach that very strongly next week. But the Bible says, They that are Christ, apostrophe S, they that belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust.
We must be led in a specific direction. And this was a tried and true prayer, prayer pattern. I put it in your hand. You are aware. You are aware that there's nowhere in the Bible that says you've got to keep your eyes squeezed tight shut the whole time you pray. It's a... Listen to me. I had a hard time, Brother Billy. When I first started using prayer patterns, I had a hard time of doing this. As if it wasn't serious enough if I didn't have my eyes shut. This is a prayer pattern. You can read and follow it step by step. And end up in the Holy of Holies. It's a tried and true prayer pattern. I apologize. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit tonight. But I also feel like I've got to deal with the seriousness of establishing a prayer life. You Don't look for a ministry. Oh, Lord Jesus. Don't look to establish a calling. Don't look to be used in the church. Until you first have established a prayer life on your own. I told you before, I, I am doing this under the influence of the Holy Ghost, under the direction of the Holy Ghost. I called and ordered these. Because I got to put something in your hand because we got to have a move of God. And for many of us, we got to learn how to pray. Do you know there are some folk that do not know how to pray unless all hell breaks loose in their life? Come on now. There are some people that only know how to pray if they got something wrong. How do you pray when you go to the Lord and everything's good? Well, I, we don't have nothing to talk about no more. Because all I can talk to him about is God fix this, Lord straighten this up, Lord I need you here, need you here, need you here, need you here, need you here. I'm done, holler at you tomorrow. Huh? Do you feel me? With the leading of great men of prayer and the directions of God, we can follow the tabernacle plan. As noted at the bottom of your prayer pattern on the back, this prayer pattern was followed and prayed daily by Bishop G.A. Mangan, a prolific pastor and prayer warrior from Alexandria, Louisiana. It's where I go every January to because of the times to a church that they have a prayer room built into their church that has an outside entrance and a key and everybody that prays goes in it and 24 hours a day, 7 days a week non-stop since 1972 they've prayed and brother Billy you can tell it can't you in a town barely larger than Cape Girada they run 2,000 in their church Miracles, signs, and wonders. But that man was elected pastor in Alexandria. And he began to pray. Prayer works. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. I read today in this, as a matter of fact, of Brother Chester Wright, Bishop Chester Wright, who, whom I follow on the internet. And I've heard him speak. And, and I have some of his DVDs. I'd be happy to share them with you. But you, you need to... You need to you know, be prepared to sit there a couple of hours. But in 1980, after 10 years of working out a home missions church in Annapolis, Maryland, they had 534 people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in 1980. 532, excuse me. And in 1981, they had 1,034 people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost after having ran 125 previously. I'm telling you, prayer works. These prayer patterns work. But the, the, the old way of praying, the, the way that you have prayed, where you repeat yourself over and over and over again, and you say, hallelujah, 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 thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, until you run out of times to say it or you run out of breath, that's not even the way to move into the presence of the Lord. You pray specific. He's your friend. He's your father. The tabernacle. I hope I don't sound mad tonight. I'm not mad at all. But I am, I am very serious about this. We got to have a move of God.
And I've been feeling it for weeks. And I've been praying. And I've been preaching to the problems. And I've been wrong in doing so. Not that you didn't need to hear it. But I can preach till I'm blue in the face. But until you have a prayer life that has made your way sensitive to the Holy Ghost and sensitive to the leading of the Spirit, it will fall on deaf ears. The tabernacle. Everybody say the tabernacle. How many have ever seen a picture of the tabernacle? How many have never seen a picture of the tabernacle? Okay. If you have the internet, go home tonight and Google the tabernacle. You can look at thousands of pictures of it. The tabernacle was a, uh, an enclosure, a tent-like in structure that had very intricate, specific colors and everything for the curtains all the way around it. The entire enclosure was set with the gate or the entrance facing the east, which is this direction. So the tabernacle would have been set up kind of like our church is. The dimensions are a little bit different, but the door would have been there instead of there. There was only one door, and there was a linen covering over it. It was dyed three colors, red, purple, and blue. Everybody say red, red. purple, and blue. Keep those colors in your mind. What three colors did I just say? Shazam, we have got somewhere tonight. We have arrived. The outer circumference surrounding the tabernacle was unbroken. There were no other doors, there were no other gates, no other access, just one gate. These hangings, these, these skin hangings, these tapestry hangings were about 30 feet wide or 20 cubits wide, each one of them that made up the, the partitions around. The only way in was through the gate. On the Day of Atonement... The tenth day of the seventh month, the high priest would first make atonement for himself and his house, and then for the tabernacle, and then for the people. With an intricate ceremonial dipping of his finger in blood and putting it on the horns of the altar and elsewhere, sprinkling it ultimately on the mercy seat, applying of the blood of the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> 